So they were going through the cell phone, calling everybody. The, the most, like the most frequently called numbers, they were calling them to try to figure out who this person was. Wow. And then the person that I am, if you ask me, I'm going to tell you, you know, I told him who it was. And he was like, well, we got all these calls to the ER. I said, she works in the ER. I did not know they were going straight to the ER and sat and wait and, and arrested him at her job. Wow. But he, but wait a second. Wait a second. This this is current, right? No, this, this first, this, the first one happened. This is the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. The second one was when he sent me the picture of the dude and asked me, did I know the dude? And I told him no. Right. But that's, that's the one that she's driving for. So I didn't pay any attention, but you know, being the curious woman that I am, I went online to see if they had a history of her arrest and dang it, they didn't. They arrested her in Durham and they arrested her in Wake County. So yeah. like Durham and Raleigh. And on both of them, it was identity theft, credit card fraud, and something else. Mm -hmm. I said, and my brother said, that means she was doing it the whole time. You just didn't know. So that means you basically put me in jeopardy because you didn't tell me what was going on. What if they had pulled us over and I'm riding with you? They're not going to believe that I don't know. Right. They're going to take it together. They might, because once they started talking to me, they were like, she don't know nothing. But the thing is, why put me in that position without forewarning me? And then, they you don't know. Care. They don't care about you. Yeah, then you get upset because I don't have anything to say to you. Because you let me know pretty much it ain't about me. You don't care about me. It's all about you. And that's fine for the people in your world. Right. But I don't have the patience, nor do I have the energy to deal with that. So um, one of the mothers of the church that knows both of us, she said, well, have you talked to her? I said, uh-uh. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not running out here looking for her. If she calls, I'll answer, but I'm not looking for her. And she said, oh, well, I was trying to get in touch with her. I can't hear because I'm going to be honest with you. She's no longer on my radar. Right. I don't blame you. And my thing is, you don't, it started with a discussion about dude that I'm dealing with now. All right, I understand he's slow because he's a man and he has a <laughs> long chromosome. So y'all move a little slower than we women think y'all should move. I understand that. You came out and just said he's slow. <laughs> huh? You said, I know he's a little slow. <laughs> and, and it's okay. But I know that he loves me, even though he doesn't know how to tell me. I know he loves me. Mm -hmm. No man is going to put up with all of this because, you know, I got some mouth on me. No man is going to put up with all that unless he cares. Because after a while, he'd be like, look, shut up. But he, he's not done that yet. Well, do you expect it? Nah. What did you, why did you say yet? <laughs> because, you know, some men do. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. But, but the thing is, okay, when we first, remember I told you, we first started talking and we were just establishing relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, reestablishing. So I didn't expect him to come trying to just knock me down. Right. Her thing was, hell, won't you if he ain't trying to throw you in the bed? I said, that's not true. That is not true at all. I said, it depends on what his overall agenda is. Right. And he, his overall agenda is not just this. Don't get me wrong there. He wants to say, but that's not the overall agenda. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I finally relented last week <laughs> and then come over. Wait, no, wait, I wait, mean, wait, wait. You, you relented? <laughs> like, like that's not something you wanted either? No, no, no. I, it was. Got I you was stuttering. Decide, Got you stuttering. I was trying to decide if I really wanted to deal with everything that came with that. Right. Because I know him. He's extremely demanding of my time, which I really don't have an issue with that that's what I want. Right. But I also know then I got to deal with your emotions. And some days I don't feel like dealing with your emotions. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real. Sundays, I don't want to hear all that. But <laughs> I realize he's not. I could, man, I have fussed him out. I have called him just, well, I ain't call him really bad names, but you know, I was talking slick to him and all this. And all he does is he sits and he waits. And then he'll, but a couple of days later, you still mad at me? 
I'm like, dude, <laughs> most of them would have been gone by them. It'd have been like, I ain't dealing with her no more. But he is like, I, I guess you could describe him like a little pit bull. Once he gets his job, once he locks on, it's, it's over because he ain't going nowhere. Right. And But, like I told him, you still got some stuff you need to clean up. Which is fine. Because Karen got some stuff she need to work out. <laughs> Don't we all? But he tells me that my mouth is a little bit slicker than it ought to be. And I said, okay. So man, I don't come back at you like you come at me. Because I I, you'll be crying and you won't talk to me no more. I said, probably not. But um, he's the one thing that I can honestly say about him is if I if we could be mad is I don't know what at each other. But if I'm in, in a situation and I need him to help me figure something out. Right. All of that is over there in the corner somewhere because he's going to help me figure it out. So. We're, we're still we're still maneuvering through this thing. That's all. I, that's all I can say. I, I, know he, I know he ain't going nowhere, but we still maneuvering through it. But that, you know, I've been dealing with him. And like I said, I haven't, you know, she just, I was done. And, and it's, it's sad when you know that you're done because you get this, this feeling of, I don't even care. And, and I hate to be pushed into that type of a situation, but that's where I am right now. I don't even care no more. You know, I'm concerned about you. You're homeless. You, the man that you're dealing with, he won't even help you get somewhere to stay because he doesn't have a stable place to stay. I'm trying to figure out, you know, because me and my mom over here, there's no space. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to help you out. But then she started asking to borrow money. And my whole thing with that is you're not working. So how are you going to pay me that? Right. Don't say borrow. Just say, can I have? And if I can afford to give it, yeah, I would give it. But you say borrow. So that means you think I'm stupid and. But she's not stable enough to borrow money. Right. Because, I mean, even if it's five dollars, the point is, I know if I give it to you, I'll never see it again. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, she felt like as her friend, I was supposed to help her out of financial situations. And I had to tell her, when you get yourself in those situations, you can't look for anybody else to bail you out. That's right. When you choose not to pay your rent because you want to do X, Y, or Z, and then you get put out, you can't expect people to come to your rescue because you set yourself up for that. And I just, I have an issue with that. And and I kept, you know, I started, you know how, you know how my mind goes. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm watching you do what you do, but I'm, I'm asking myself. Are you thinking about anybody besides yourself? And that began to be my question, which is why I think it became so easy for me to say, you know what, I'm done. You're nice for asking that because it was obvious. Huh? I said, you're nice for asking if it's done because it was obvious as a friend, you know? Well, I was asking myself, not her. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Not her. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, but wait, it's all about you. When you call me on the phone, all I hear is all this not because you, she was dealing with people. In my opinion, I felt like they weren't at her level, but I had to, you know, I had to step back and say, wait a minute. They are on her level. Right. This is what she's used to. But you're not going to introduce me to that mess. Why, why would you try to hook me up with somebody who loves hanging out in the projects? He has moved out of the projects, but he comes back to be like, I don't know, this big man or whatever. But I'm like, it's in the hood, baby. Bring, bring yourself up. Come on up. And see, he didn't want to come up. And I said, first of all, why would you introduce me to somebody like that? Secondly, you knew he was in a relationship. So what are you trying to say? Just because you're going to settle for that doesn't mean I'm going to. And she was like, well, I, I said, look, and before I realized what I said, I said, don't introduce me to any more bottom feeders because I am not at the bottom. And I think she got a little, because the one little girl had called her a bottom feeder. She thought, she said, you ain't nothing about a bottom feeder. You don't want to come up to the top. And so that was, I knew that was a prickly sit, you know, term, but at the time, right. that's what the term that fit. Mm. You know, just like the dude I told you that I dealt with that went to jail for murder. 
Oh man, whoa! I told you about him. Yes, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, but I gotta refresh, refresh my memory. Yeah, you did. It's been a while since but you talked. Oh my god! She don't ask me. Why don't you contact him? I said, for what? I said we we were done before he went to jail. I have no reason to contact him. Um, we don't have anything to say to each other. I said because when he was out and he was driving. He rode past me in the hot July sun and didn't part his lips because he mad at me. So you would leave me out there in the sun to bake because you mad at me and you think I got something else to say to you? No, bro. Mm-mm. And, and once I let, I let him have it, I'm going to tell you, I took him all the way, as, as one dude say, I took him all the way down to the marrow of the bone. Mm-hmm. I went to the my words cut that deep, and I did not curse at him, but I let him know. Mm-mm. I let him know. I spent four months with you, but it felt like four years. And it will never happen again. And see, one of the things that me and my guy that I'm doing with now that we had to work on was he was he he sent the man to work on my car. And being the woman that I ain't on because I do stuff just because I was trying to prove that I didn't want old dude no more. Mm-hmm. So I started talking to him. And because I was in the rebound state, I didn't really do the research I normally do on people. <laughs> and when I realized what I was dealing De- with, I said, Detective. Oh You're supposed to be a detective, though. Huh? You're supposed to be a detective. Yeah, but I didn't. I was... I was so upset with, with old dude that I was just like, you know what? I'm going to show you I don't need you. I'm going to show you. I bet y'all won't do that again ever in my life. I said this because the dude wasn't the one that I wound up dealing with. He wasn't used to anything. Mm-hmm. He did his shopping at the dollar store, like grocery shopping at the dollar store. I said, baby, this ain't a grocery store. This is where you could pick up little stuff in case you, you know, this is not a grocery store. Mm -hmm. He was extremely selfish. And he felt like I should do for him, but he didn't have to do for me because he kept screaming, we ain't in a relationship. I just live here. I said, okay. So one day I had gone to the mailbox like really early because I had forgotten to go the day before and I was looking for something. And he going to say, I know you went to go meet somebody in the parking lot. Because I heard the car pull up. I said, wait a minute, hold up. See, you got it twisted. This is my house. If I want to meet somebody, be it 6 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock at night, they come to my door. I'm not leaving my house to go meet somebody in the parking lot just because you're here. I said, because we're not in a relationship. And he dropped his little head and went on my visit. Don't do that to me. And like, and my mother was like, my mother hated him from day one. <laughs> no, because my mother picked up on something that I missed because I was not in my right mind. She could not stand him. She said, I, you know, cause she told me, she said, I feel like he's trying to keep you away from everybody. I said, he is, but you're not going to keep me from talking to my mother. Mm-hmm. She's special. We have our moments, but you ain't going to keep me from talking to her. And you're not going to keep her from checking up on me. So she sent my brother because my I, at that time, I mean, I was at a real low point. And I think that's how he got in because I had no money because they, they were playing with my money at work. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fighting to keep my apartment. I'm mad at old dude because he ain't doing what I want him to do the way I want him to do it when I want him to do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you talking about? Cooking breakfast? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's a battle of wills between me and this one, and I know it. But I realize I could win the battle, but it'll break him. And I don't want to do that. Because I know that I am an extremely stubborn woman. I know that. Mm-hmm. But I don't, I don't want to break him. I want him to feel like he is the man and he is my protector. I, I do want him to do that. So I'm mindful of the battles that I pick now. But at that time, I was at a really low point. Right. It was a lot of stuff going on. And he presented himself, the mechanic did, you know, like he was going to be that one. Because he was like, you know, 
Twan had the opportunity. He blew it. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And I was like, okay, you know, you saying the right things, but it won't come out of the right mouth. Right. So what I finally did, I was like, okay, Lance, he did not like taking a bath. Oh come on. I was like, wait, Dude. wait, 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 wait. I, I, whoa, whoa. I got two bathrooms. Tell me why you ain't been been taking wait, a bath. Wait, wait, wait. I mean, like days. There's no excuse. None. I had two bathrooms. Wait, you said none. So he was thinking. No, no, no. He would take like he might take one on Monday. Uh huh. And you may not hear that water run again until Sunday or Monday. Wait, so my- wait, wait. He would take one on Monday. Uh huh. And you won't hear it till Sunday or Monday. Yeah. Now I don't so know, do you mean a week? During the other times, he would take, as the old folks say, a wash up. No, right, but that don't count. Wait, that means what? Immersing your ass in a tub or in the shower. Yes. So my question, because he told me that, you know, wait, wait. He said I used to sleep in my car and I would go to the BP and clean up. But he's not there anymore. Wait, wait. I had to remind him, baby, you ain't you ain't at that state no more. I have two full bathrooms. If you don't want to come into my bathroom. You can use the other one. There's there's no excuse. I, you know, and I said, and I'm sitting here thinking in my mind, why am I having to have this conversation with you? This man is 47. So he wasn't that much younger than me. So I'm thinking you're over 35. You know better. I said, and so then he said, well, you know, sometimes he, he tried to give me a reason why he didn't. I said, dude, you got to do better. Because there's no excuse. Oh, my God. You know. So he would get and, in the bed next to you. So now Monday he took a shower or bath. Uh-huh. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh-huh. Saturday, say Sunday comes around. He still wants to drag his behind in the bed with you, stinking like that. Even if you, if it, if he did like a little touch up thing, I don't care about the touch up thing. It don't count. Touch ups don't count. Don't count. T- the don't only count. time that touch ups don't count, or, or 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 do count rather, is if you wash up that morning and you feel a little sweaty around your face and on the arms, and you're somewhere. And you say, you know, let me yeah. do it. right the same same day action. But yeah. not, but but now when you do the same day action. If it got bad enough to do the same day action, that means later on you really need to go take another bath. Take a shower. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And so, um, oh man, I say it. I got you another know, question I, for you. What did he want intimacy during his funky phase? He did, and I would get up and go like, "This is what would happen." I would take a shower. Oh, oh, Wait, the oh. first month or so, he had me thinking that when I went to take my shower, he was taking a shower. Until I said, wait a minute. Because one time I said, you know, I'm just going to take a wash up because I took a shower earlier. Right. So I'm done and I don't get no water. And I said, okay. But like I told, like I told Twan, I said, I didn't tell you. I said, because I know you and you would have came over there and jacked him up. Mm-mm. And so this, what was going on was I'm trying to prove to myself that I don't, I don't want Twan, I don't love him, I don't want to be with him, so I'm gonna go be with someone else. He happened to cash in on that because, like I said, I was at a low point on all fronts. My self esteem was not where it was because I was doubting myself, you know. And so, after about two months, I said, "Hold up," you know. It was like, "Wake up." What what did Chrisette Michelle say? I had an epiphany. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I said, this dude right here is not used to anything. So I can't take him nowhere. Every time when I would go to work, he swore up and down if I put on eyeshadow and lipstick. I was trying to get somebody. I could walk to my job since my car wasn't working. I could walk to my job and walk back home. Oh, he didn't want me to do that. He wanted to take me to work because he wanted to do to see him take me to work. I don't care. So I said, do what? Now, mind you, he's still in contact with his baby's mama in Charlotte. 
So he going to tell me, well, you know, I got to choose. I said, no, you don't. No, you don't. I said, the fact that you made that statement, you've already made your choice. I said, now, when you going to Charlotte? So he, he got upset with me. But now, mind you, during this whole time, Twan and I were talking every day. Mm. I mean, every day. And we were talking, basically what happened was, because being with him only made me miss him, he and I were talking about stuff we should have been talking about when we were all up on each other. Mm -hmm. And so we got to a point where, you know, we would really have some deep conversations. And so he said, you know, Paul said, well, I can't mess with you because, you know, you with him. I said, he don't want me. I said, he won't say chicken Charlotte. He said, well, he's stupid. I said, I can't say he's stupid, but that's his choice. So, you know, we were talking and then it got to, well, you know, I missed the way you did da 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 Wait now, you gotta tell me. Don't be don't be sensitive stuff with me. Well, I You're embarrassed because he was funky. No, no, I told Twan, I said, I miss the way that you that you you know, you could handle me. I said, because I know you could hit it like I wanted to be hit, right? Right. And he was like, But he got you. I said, No, oh, he really doesn't. Mm. I said, he could, I hit, he could hit them nostrils with that funk. Yeah, that. But I mean, he was on a woman's scale, he was average. But Lance, I'm gonna tell you what. The biggest turnoff for me was he had some huge balls. <laughs> and I was like, they suck us like grapefruit. What the hell? Oh man. And I, you know I'm special, okay? <laughs> yes, I do. When I looked at that, I said, he little, he got these huge balls and he got an average size penis. And what I told my girlfriend, I said, he's not a lover. He's a fucker. Right. And she, she said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, girl, all he do is bam, bam, bam. I think he did something. And so I would ask him, well, honey, is that all you know? Or, you know, <laughs> is, it, is it something that I'm not doing? I mean, can you tell me? And he was like, no, I just, you know, find a relationship, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. So his thing was, until I'm in a relationship, I'm not going to kiss you. I'm not going to be affectionate, blah, blah, blah. Right. So he's not, he's not kissing you. He's not affectionate. Uh -uh. But he's laying up with you, but that's not a relationship. I mean, it doesn't exactly. make it a whole relationship, but no, you got no. that close. So it must be something. Yeah. No, because he now when we first got together, he was living in at some kind of house or something, and so he would come over every day. So he, you know, he would take a shower because so he, he was had homeless. To huh? He was homeless. He was homeless, and then he moved into what they call like an Oxford house. Yeah. And it, he said it was just because that was the only place they could find for him to go. That's what he said. I took him at his word because I was not that pressed. So the first two weeks that I dealt with him, he was living there. So I didn't have to deal with the phone. And we were having sex almost every day. Mm -hmm. You go, girl. That's, but that's, that's honestly what I'm used to. Right. He, he wasn't used to that. So, you know, he made a comment about that, too, that my oh. appetite was not normal. He was complaining? Yeah, well, huh? He was complaining? Yeah. Wait a second. He don't wash his ass, but he's complaining about you and your appetite. Yeah. And then he had a hernia. And he gonna tell me, well, this how you push it back in? I said, I'm not touching that. I wasn't being fun. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> and then he told me, talking about, you know, when I'm having sex, I could, you know, I could, it's liable to bust or something, 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 and I could die. And I'm thinking in my head, dude, if you die <laughs> in my house, laugh. No, if you die in my house, I'm going to roll you out the door and then I'm going to call them. <laughs> they ain't coming up in here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, okay, you got a lot of issues going on and then you got the nerve to try to be arrogant. And his thing was, quote unquote, you can't trust a pretty girl with a shape. So what is he doing with you then? And I asked my sister what... First of all, I didn't think he was referring to me. I said, so what you talking about? And I started losing weight because I'm, I was 
I wanted to get off of that um, type 2 diabetes medicine. And so I said, I'm going to lose some weight and we're going to bring this thing down. Right. He told me I need to stop losing weight. I said, say what? He said, you you too little now. What? I said, I said, let me tell you something. If you want me to stay huge just so you can be happy, you might as well cancel that right now. Because regardless of if I am a 28 or if I'm the size I am now, which is like a 14, 16, I'm always going to be thick because thickness is just in my genes. Right. It's just a different size of thickness. So he told me that I was losing too much weight and that because I had a shape, he couldn't trust me. Oh, because, he because could, guys are going to be looking at you and you might run with them. But at, at the end of the day, though, if I'm with you, what does it matter? But that shows you how he's thinking. He's very insecure. So now I told him, Lance, I was honest. I told him. I said, I am still talking to Twine. We still talk. You know, everything's everything. At first, he was okay. Then he was like, no, because I know Twine's still trying to get back in because he was asking me to come back over. <laughs> I said, but we're not even there. We're we're trying to renew, you know, reestablish our friendship because I met him. I met Twine through his mother. Right. I know the whole family. So I was just trying to get it back to you know, we cool, everything's wonderful. Not realizing at the time that ain't gonna never happen because he didn't got in, he ain't going nowhere. Right. So I'm explaining to him, you know, I'm going to reestablish my friendship with him because we will always be friends if we're not gonna be anything else. And so he had he had said to my friend why are they still talking to each other? If it's over, it's over. And she was like, I can't answer that. You need to ask her that. Ask him that. And so, um, I had gotten put out of my apartment. I told you about that, right? When I lost my apartment. Yeah. He was with me. Now, let me tell you what this self-centered person said. If you don't find us somewhere to go, between now and tomorrow, I'm gone. I said, bye. <laughs> I said, because what you're not going to do is push me into signing a lease with a slumlord and then I can't get anything fixed. Right. And, you know, whatever they promised. I said, no, no, no. I need to check that out before I just, you know, sign a lease with somebody. No, you need to go. I said, no. You go find somewhere. Right. And so well, that's when we got into it. And I had to call the police on them. And I called Twan and I said, I told him I said I had to call the police. He said, for what? And I told him what happened because basically what it was, he had some of my stuff that belonged at work and he didn't want to give it back to me. No one, I had to go back to work. Right. And Twan said, well, did he put his hands on you? I said, uh-uh. I said, I'd have told you that. I'm fine. And he said, but he was drinking, wasn't he? I said, yeah. He said, okay. And I said, but my whole thing is, he pushed me to the point where I'm not finna fuss with you. I just got put out of my place. I don't have time to sit here and go back and forth with you. And so he said, if I if you go near my, my truck, I'm gonna call the cops. I said, you ain't got to worry. I'm gonna call them for you. And the cop came and he told him, if you just bring her, bring it back, bring the stuff back, give her her bag. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with you. Right. He told me I was trying to set him up because he knew I knew he had been drinking and he knew that if he pulled up, they would have got him for drunk driving. I said, listen, I won't even think about you like right. that. Right. I do my stuff. So he going to get nasty with me and then he cussed the policeman out. Right. Uh -oh. And <clears throat> being the devilish woman that I can be. I called. The girl in Charlotte, I said, listen, I need to let you know something um, just to give you a heads up. I said, you were talking to him but and you were sending him money and he was spending every penny of that money in my house. I said, he told you that he was sleeping in the guest room. I said, sweetheart, he didn't sleep. He hadn't slept in the guest room from day one. Whoa, how'd she take that? I said, and he told me 
he can get money out, out of you and he doesn't have to touch you. Wow. So his his insurance, his car insurance was in her name. His phone was in her name and something else. Man, she canceled all of that. She was hot. She canceled all of that. And he told me, you just ruined my life. I said, no, I didn't. I said, you need to stop leeching off people. <laughs> because yeah, he messes what? up and wants to. <laughs> yeah. And but see, my thing is this. If I get to the point where I just tell you everything that's been on my mind and, and I tell you to go away, I'm done. When you push me to that point, I'm done. And so that was um, his issue. Because he really thought he was going to come back. He just knew he had your number. Yeah, he thought he was going to like to my, you knew I was coming back. I said, I didn't know anything. I said, because at that point, I was tired. I was tired of you. I was not dealing with it. And so he got upset with me. Because he came back at 5 o'clock in the morning beating on the door like a fool. And so once all of that, you know, because the, the policeman that came and took the report, he knew him. And he was like, I remember him. I'm going to get him. I mean, he was like, well, no, right? And I was like, okay. So the following week when he hadn't returned my stuff, he was getting ready to turn it over to the major detectives and they were going to charge him with identity theft because he had the parents' information for my kids. So I called Twan. I said, Twan, I said, you better talk to him. I said, because the detectives are coming for him. He said, wait, wait, wait. Just in. I don't know what happened. I know in 15 minutes, he called me back and told me, I told you I ain't had your stuff. It's on the front porch, which means he took it over to the apartment and put it in front of the door. I don't know what Antoine said to him. I don't know what he did, but I know I got my stuff back. <laughs> and so when he was calling himself trying to reconcile with me his first question was why are you always calling Juan and telling him everything I said because I want to he said well you told him I said I never told him you stole anything I told him you would not give it back right and so he said but I, don't, I just don't like the fact that you called him I said hey, you're going to be alright I said I ain't heard from you in like because I hadn't heard from him in like three months I said, I heard from you in three months. I ain't know what you were doing. And then this is what gets me. And then you tell me if I'm wrong. I let you come to my house when you were homeless. I wound up having to go back to my mom's. You get a place. He gets a house. And not once does he ask me, do I want to come stay with him? Right. So, it I mean, I so, so centered. Yeah, I would have said no, but he didn't even ask. He didn't even say, Karen, I'm working now because he got a job. He's, I'm working now. He could at least give me some money knowing that I was, you know, going through some things, right? right. Didn't offer a dime. And so I was like, this little selfish Negro. So he going to tell my girl, um, well, I got the house. I'm trying to show her I can do stuff. I said, and I told her, I said, listen, I ain't trying to be funny. But he hasn't said a word to me, but he can tell you all this. I don't want to hear it because he should be talking to me. He sh if he's trying to prove his case to me, he should be coming to me and telling me this stuff. He shouldn't be telling you so you can tell me. Right. And she was like, yeah. I said, I don't have time for that little kitty stuff. Chain of and command. So was, huh? Chain of command. Yeah, I don't have time for that. And so she was laughing. She told me, she said, oh, I, I knew you were about done with him. She's like, because I know Twan trying to get back in the picture. I said, he really is. And so he and I argued for a little bit, you know, but he had to come to terms with the fact that, yes, I dealt with him because I felt like you pushed me to a point where I had to do something. I didn't have to, but you know what I mean? Basically, it was, I'm going to show you, and I wound up eating it, so we won't do that again. Um, but when we went to court in July, because the first court date was on my birthday, and I told him, I'm not coming to court on my birthday, not with you. Mm 
No, sir. Mm-hmm. Went on about my business, right? And so they sent me another notice. He going to try to play it up and say the DA was going to arrest me if I didn't show up. No, you just mad because <laughs> still <need> move you. Because <laughs> when he was living with me during those four months, he went to jail twice. Oh, he God. went. What did he do? He went once for a traffic accident. And then he went once for delinquent child support. But I'm saying like the traffic uh-huh. accident. What, what, I mean, like he did something to try to get away or something. He was drunk. Oh, God. And he was really too drunk to drive. And he had gone over because Twan had called him over there for something. And Twan was over there with his little new girlfriend or whatever. And they were sitting down drinking and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure some words were exchanged. So he gets up in a huff to leave and he's telling him, man, don't go out there. You going to hurt somebody because you're too drunk to drive. Calm down and let some of that, you know, alcohol wear off or whatever. Well, he and I had gotten into an argument earlier that day because I was watching The Perfect Guy. And I said the dude was crazy. Mm-hmm. So he defended him and said, no, he ain't crazy. He just love her. I said, sweetheart, that's crazy. If she tells you to go away, there is no need for you to keep bothering that girl. So we went back and forth about that. And he thought I was being harsh. No, that's just crazy. Right. And I started telling him, I see it in you, but you ain't stupid. Because he... He has stalker potential. He's the type that'll go around looking in your window. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Because one day I didn't answer the door, so he went around and was looking through the window trying to see if I was home. Well, if you're home and you don't want to answer your door, that's, I mean, come on. You can, you can look him right in the eye and not say anything. Yeah, I was that's asleep. Rude. But my whole thing is, why are you stalkerish? Yeah. Why are, you, why are you peeping in my window? And so... I was like, this boy is crazy. So we had gotten to an argument. He goes over there. He gets to, we were drinking before he left. I don't know what made him get behind the wheel. Then he goes over there. He drinks some more. Then he tried to call himself. I think he was going to Charlotte to see old girl, which is fine with me. But he wound up in an accident. And he fought the cops so bad that they tased him. And when they tased him, it caused a mild heart attack. So he went to the hospital. And the only thing I could remember was Keisha's. I said, that's fine. And from that point on, she started calling. And I had to tell him, hey, you're here with me, relationship or not. She don't need to be calling you after 12 o'clock at night. I said, because you're not talking about your son. So y'all, you can can that. How you know? I said, dude, come on now. It's 12 30 night. She calling you probably because she wants you to come get with something. You, you, you're welcome to go, but you don't going to disrespect me. So, one of those days, I think we got into it because she called at about one o'clock. He told me, You don't understand. I said, And I'm not trying to. He said, Well, I'm getting ready to go because he thought I was going to say, Please don't leave. I said, Okay. I said, You want me to help you pack something? You know, he was hot, right? Oh, God, of course. But my whole thing is, he you're not going to do- care. But I didn't. And I realized after two months, I don't even know why I'm dealing with you. I was like, God, you got, God, you got to provide a way of escape so I don't have to deal with him anymore. I didn't know it was going to be me getting put out of my place, but you know, whatever. I said, because I can't, I can't deal with him. And every time I tell him to go away, he keeps coming back and we're not doing that. And so, like I said, when we got, when I got put out of my place, it was in March. I didn't hear from him again until to June. It was early March, and I didn't. And my birthday is the first of June, so I didn't hear from him until around my birthday. Wow. And yeah, because his question was, "Why didn't you come to court?" I said, "Because I told you I'm not coming to court on my birthday for you and nobody else." And so um, then he was like, "Well, I want some." I was like, "Mm hmm." And I'm thinking, you know, yeah, it's been a minute. I want a little bit. Never last. Ain't ain't change. No, bro. I'm good. So he had invited me and old girl over there for the fourth because he was cooking on the grill and she was supposed to be talking to his roommate. Mm-hmm. Now you tell me, how is it that a naked picture of her wound up on his phone? Oh damn. 
Maddie, by that by that time, you know, I didn't care. But that let me know how grimy she was right. and how attractive she was. Because I'm like, first of all, why does he have a naked picture of you? And then he going to tell her, I'm going to tell her we screwing. with and I said, and you tell him, I don't care one way or the other, because I don't want him. Because after about, I'm gonna say after about two and a half months, I wasn't, we weren't having sex anymore. So he called himself being funny, right? Right. He jacks off in, in, in his pants, and he puts the pants in front of the washing machine. And you know how politely put them in the washing machine, washed them, and kept on going. So wait now, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so, so he masturbated in front of you, or he did it where you didn't see, and then put it there. Yeah, he did it, and I, I didn't know he was doing it. Cause I didn't really care. Cause see, okay, I'm gonna tell the whole truth. Nothing when, the whenever, truth. whenever we would have sex, yeah, I would have to finish myself because he he couldn't. Okay, yeah. And so he would get. He said, "What you doing?" I said, I'm minding my business. But he got mad that you had to finish yourself? And he could have well, finished see, my, whole thing, my thing was this. I was not trying to offend him. I really didn't care what he thought, honestly. Um, but you didn't. You weren't doing what I needed you to do. And so, if I mention it to you twice and you still aren't doing it, then you don't want to do it. I mean, what, what did you want him to do? I'm being nosy now. I wanted him to be less uh, more emotional, more more love making instead of just sex. I don't know. I didn't even want the emotion. I just wanted more tactile. You know, right. I you act like you know you're afraid to touch me. I'm like I don't understand what's going on with you, and I don't really care. But you ain't doing what I need. So. If I say to you more than once, why don't you do this and why don't you do that, and you don't have an answer for me, and you do not change your repertoire, then I got to do what I got to do. Hmm. So <laughs> I was telling her, I said, you know, I said I just have to do myself. I said because I don't know what he doing. Right. And he was like, oh. Because I never had that issue with him. If he even thought I was getting ready to start touching myself, he said, uh-uh, that's my job. But I was like, and I knew that it wasn't fair to compare him to Twan because I love Twan. I don't even care about you. But he handles me so differently, and I, I don't know what you're doing. Right. And so he would get upset because I would just do myself. And so he would sit there and watch me. I said, what are you doing? Don't watch me. You ain't doing it. Don't watch me. <laughs> I'm not and that's how I feel. I'm not doing it for your entertainment. I'm doing it because I don't know what the crap ever you did. So, um, yeah, he was not happy with me. And I knew he was talking to some other chick, which is fine. Because I wanted her to tell him to come stay with her so bad. But she didn't. He went, he went oh, it's show back up. And I'm like, I don't know. And then you would lie to me, and I knew you were lying, but because I didn't care, I didn't challenge you. Mm -hmm. So when he's getting ready to go to jail, he cleans out his car, and he brings me this lipstick. And I looked at it. I never wear dark, like dark brown lipstick. Never. Never. So you hand me this tube. I said, I looked at it. I said, this ain't my lipstick. Must be his little girlfriend. And I threw it away. But he didn't realize, I, I already peeped you, bro. I don't care. So when, when he goes to jail the first time, he just knows that Twan is over there. I said, no, he's not here. But well, he wants to be over here. I said, okay, but he has not expressed that to me, so that's not something I need to deal with. So the second time he goes in, I'm thinking they're going to keep him. Man, they ain't, because they, they're supposed to keep him 90 days. Two weeks, he was out. I was like, oh, God. Because I was like, I was hoping, you know, that he would be gone. And by the time he got out, I would be gone. But after we went to court, he had an assignment. Because, you know, he got his job. He had, he got a job working with Sunrock. I know you've heard of them, the concrete company. So he got the job, even with his record, because he had a felony. 
And um, he got brand new on me. He literally tried to give me his behind the kiss. Like, I got a job. I've gotten a house now. I still have my car. What have you got? I said, really? I said, you really want to go? You want to come at me like that? And uh, when I finished, he ended up setting me. Because I know that he broke the axle on my car on purpose. Huh? He was supposed to fix the belt. Well, I, I won't say the axle. It was the uh, the little thing that the belt hooks onto. He broke it. Because what happened was my, uh, what was it? The power steering belt broke because it was the original one and he had been on for like 10 years. You know, it's time for it to go. All I needed to do was to put the belt back on. First, you couldn't get the, the nut, the lug nut off to get to it. Then when you finally get to it, you broke it. And I know he broke it on purpose because he didn't want me driving my car. He wanted me to depend on him. I told Antoine, I said, don't you ever send another person to work on my car. If you can't fix it or you can't find somebody to come with you, don't send nobody else. Because you're not allowed to introduce me to anybody else. <laughs> Baby, I didn't know. I said, did you really think I was going to tell you that I was stupid enough to deal with this man? And he said, I really didn't know he was that bad. I said, he is horrible. I said, he is not used to anything. And I am not in the business of bringing folk up. I don't have a patient. And I don't want to exercise my patience in that area. And so, you know, I... We talked about that a lot, and I had to let him know, you know, this is what happened. This is how it went. Now, part of it was my fault because I called myself trying to prove something. I said, but even still, he tried really hard to take full advantage of me. And he was like, I ain't know. So I already know that when he sees him, he's going to jack him up. I already know that. If he ever gets out of jail, because he's still sitting in jail as far as I know. Because he did it three years ago. You know, I checked my little calendar three years ago. And he's been like, the lady, um, I had called to check on him one time. And the lady said, when his lawyer is ready, the prosecutor is not ready, vice versa. So it's been postponed or delayed a couple of times. I said, oh, okay. Because he hasn't even gotten gotten his sentence yet. So, I don't know if they're going to plead it down, but right now it's second degree murder. Because he went to work, got into an argument with this dude and he killed the dude. And I told, because Tom was like, well, you know he doing time? I said, he makes dumb decisions, so he got to pay for his dumb decisions. I said, he could have pulled himself in and said, meet me after work. But you're going to kill the boy on the job. Nobody has any sense. And then I said, well, I think it was over a girl. So I said, well, that's what he gets. Because um, when we were at the, at the hotel, the, the night that I had gotten um, put out of the apartment, his argument had been, if you have a lock on your phone, you have something to hide, right? And I said, but if you have a touch screen, you need a lock on your phone or else you're going to be pocket dialing people all day. So, I said, he keep asking for it, I'm going to give it to him. So, I unlocked my phone and my iPad. He went onto my iPad, went on Facebook, and saw some of the conversations that Twan and I were having. And he had a fit. Because I think the last one was where... I was telling him that I missed him and he told me he missed me too and something else. But we started talking about, you know, seeing each other. So instead of him just looking at that conversation and going on, he kept scrolling. Now you would think when he went, when my friend, um, I was talking to my friend that's in Tennessee and I used his phone and her statement was, 
I told her that I felt like going to see my friend Stacy. I said, because this man right here just get on my, I said, I'm about to the point where I'm ready to just go see Stacy and chill out with him for a little while. So she and I were talking about that. He saw her response to that. And of course she said something flip about him. Because she didn't like him either. She, she did not like him. And um, he saw that. Then he went back and read all our other conversations, right? Well, my grandmother always said, when you go look for trouble, you'll find He didn't like those conversations. Now, your friends don't like me. They always in your ear. I said, let me explain something to you. I am a grown woman. I don't care what they think. What matters is what I think. I say, anybody that knows me, no, they can't tell me what to do. And if you think I'm that easily influenced, you got me mixed up. So he was insecure because he felt like my friends were telling me not to deal with him. My friends weren't even thinking about him. We weren't talking about him like that. They were asking me, well, what you going to do with Tom? Because you know he coming back. <laughs> and I'm like, we ain't going to talk about that right now. Yeah, they all knew. They knew. Because, I mean, I can honestly say I love that man, whether I want to or not. And I was fighting it because I didn't want to. I, I just, I didn't. But that's a whole other story. But knowing that, and then I'm sitting here looking at him, I was like, ain't no way. And then I find out dealing with old dude, the one that went to jail, he used to rob everybody. So he didn't like going out because he was afraid that somebody he robbed would remember him and try to get some get back. I said, so you just going to sit at home all day? I said, I'm not doing that. And see, when he met me, because my car wasn't working, I wasn't, you know, just going everywhere because I didn't feel like dealing with the bus chronicles. I'm just sorry. Because you know there are chronicles on the bus. So, he was like, my friend was like, she said, you know, she, she normally is not at home. This is the most she's ever been at home. He said, uh-uh. She said, uh-huh. She said, I guess she's sticking around because you here because normally you can't find her. And he said, huh? And I was like, she said, you really don't know her. And I said, what's she say there for? But yeah, he was very, he thought it, all of my friends were trying to introduce me to other people. He didn't want me talking to my mama because he knew my mama didn't like him. Um, my brother was so silly. He looked at him like, and he asked me, he said, where you get here from? I said, shut up. My brother was like, he's slow. I said, I'm not. <laughs> And I was like, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, because I, I just happened to be going through my, my little calendar because I, I keep up with my little period tracker because I'm waiting on menopause to come and, come and say hello. What are you waiting and, for? <laughs> yes, because I'm like, honestly, there's no point in it for me because nothing ain't nothing coming about it. <laughs> so I'm just saying. But, um. I looked at that thing and I said, it's been three years. And I was like, God, I thank you for getting me out of that. Mm -hmm. And then I happened to be in his truck and the girl and Charlotte had a temporary restraining order on him. I said, wait, you dislocated her shoulder. She got a temporary restraining order on you and you still trying to get back. And she is I'm going to say she's about a 30, 32. She's big. Wow. And he is shorter than me, so he had to be about 5'2", maybe 5'1". He's 5'2". And, uh -huh, and one of my girls clowned him and said, you get your clothes from the Buster Brown section. I said, you're oh, stupid. Damn. Yeah, because he was little. And he liked big women, which is fine if that's what you want. But like I told him, I am not per se a big woman I just happen to be big at this moment and he was like huh I said I'm not going to stay this size I'm just letting you know like I said 
When I started losing weight, his statement was, you can't trust a woman with a shape. And I was like, what does that mean? Because <laughs> you get a big one and she rolling right, she going to mess with you too. Mm-hmm. Especially if she has any type of self-confidence, it's over. But, um, yeah, I was I was glad to get out of that. Um, then I started talking to this dude. Um, we were fine. I ain't gonna lie. We were fine until we tried to sleep together. What happened? He was a jack in the box. What's that? That's another term for what? That's the, that's some old North Carolina type slang. What's that no, mean? That's a Karen, no, that's a Karen term. I call him Jack in the Box because it keeps sliding now. I said, huh? He keeps what? Sliding out. <laughs> I said, huh? <laughs> Wait. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's sliding out because he slid in. So what's the problem? I mean, like. I wasn't understanding. All I know is after about the fourth one, he was done. So I said, "Are well, you okay?" Yeah. So I, 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 I just got to get used to it. Now I'm gonna give you one time because you know that's the first time everybody's excited. You know I understand. Second time I'm starting to wonder about you. Third time, no, bro, we can't do this because you ain't done frustrating me. And then what made it so bad, he was like six three, maybe six four. So you went from, from five two to six four. Well normally the six fours are the ones I attract. But even in his height, um everything won't in proportion. And I'm like What's that mean? He, huh? What's that mean? <laughs> Because you would think when he, you know, he's tall, that he would have a little something hanging, right? He was average. And it's one thing if you're average and you know what to do with it. It's another when you don't have a clue. Clueless, huh? And then you want to promote your oral skills. And I'm like, that's all fine and good, but you got to have something to back that up. Right. Because that can't be, that just, that ain't going to be it. And so I was like, you know what? And so me and old girl, we got into it because she was like, you can pay everybody this one. I said, listen, what I want is in that package right there. Now, Twan is not as tall as most. He's like 5'10". But God has blessed him well. And um, he actually... Height is no indication, you see? Huh? I said height is no indication. It's not. You gotta look at those hands. But <laughs> and it's not even the feet. It's not even the feet. It's the hands. But um, we fit like a glove. That's the best way I can put it. We have the same appetite, so it's not like I want it more than he does, or he wants it more than I do. I mean, we just fit. So why would I settle for something less than that when I got, you know, what I want? And so I had been, it had been two, it was, it would have been three, three years, the middle of November that no one had touched me because I didn't want to be bothered. Well, nobody else touched you, but you damn sure touched yourself. Well, sometimes, but for the most part, I had just kind of. You know, push that down. Mm-hmm. But last week, I'm gonna tell you what. Who? That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and he was just as happy as he could be that he finally got in the door. But um, yeah, I just I didn't. And he said he asked me why had it been so long. I said because the stuff that was coming at me, I didn't want. I said, and you know me well enough to know if I don't want it, I ain't fooling with it. So, but yeah. Um, oh, and we had, I had my aunt, she passed last month. Oh, no. Were you close to her? Yeah. Huh? You were close to her? 
No. Um, she was my mom's oldest sister. Mm-hmm. And they never got along. So we never spent a lot of time with her. Oh. Just recently, she and my mom had reconciled to the point where they could deal with each other. Mm-hmm. That's all I was happy about was that they made peace with each other. Mm-hmm. And she made it to her 91st birthday. And I think it was like a week later, they had taken her to the hospital. She had a sore on the bottom of her foot and she wouldn't tell anybody. She let it, she let it gang, it it just went gangrene. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was so bad by the time they got to it that the gangrene had, um, entered her bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And so they were saying that there wasn't much they could do, but just try to fight the infection, you know, to keep it from, I guess, acting on her so fast or whatever. Right. So they were preparing her to go home. So that she could receive hospital care at home. But she died before they could get her home. And I'm kind of glad that she didn't make it home. Because I think if she died in that house, Mm -hmm. her daughter would never have recovered. Yeah. You know, people always say, I want to go home and die in my bed. But you don't understand what you're doing to the people that are still there. Right. And they have the memory in whatever room you were in. And they're they're living there. And they're thinking about, you know. They wake up and think you're there. You know, I understand. It all depends on on how how developed the person is on a spiritual level. And it's still going to bother okay. you. Okay, and see, I'm going to tell you now, she won't read it. If, if my aunt had died in their house, my cousin would have went dark raven man, and I know it. Mm-hmm. And so um, I did go to see her because my mother kept begging me to come see her. So I went to see her. And um, she was angry because, you know, they had to handle her, but she had the sore on her foot and then she had an open sore on her hip and then she had another one on her back. Mm -hmm. And so every time they moved her, of course, it hurt because you're moving her with these sores. And if it's on your hip, you can't sit up. And so, um, man, she cussed everybody out. She tried to hit the lady with the little stick. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. But I understood she was in pain. But come on now, you ain't got to be that mean. Right. So my mother was like, no, no, no. That's not what you do. That's not what you do. <laughs> but my mother was the only one she would listen to. Hmm. And I said, because both of y'all bossy. That's why. So, but yeah, that's pretty much um, what's been going on in my world. I am looking for a job, but I'm trying to find something that is not a receptionist job. Right. Um, I, I need some money coming in, but I just don't want to get stuck in a spot like that because once you take it, they don't want to move you anywhere else. Yeah. And so I, I don't have time for that. So, um, mm. yeah, it, it's just been a lot going on. I can see. <laughs> I went to go see my movie, Downton Abbey, because I, I watched the series on PBS. Um, I was a little disappointed because I was expecting a little bit more drama. Right. Uh, it, but it's British, and so British television tends to move a little slow. But I was like, dang, I was expecting more than this. And I was a little disappointed, but I got to go see my movie. Um, what else has happened lately? Um, you gave me an earful pretty much. <laughs> but at least- yeah, and I, I didn't I haven't been to the jail since April because I was working my second job and then right after that I got sick. So I'm going back tomorrow. So I'm right. excited. I'm excited. I go back tomorrow and Thursday. And um yeah. I I, I think that's pretty much enough, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. You updated me, give a little t- taste of everything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have. And I, I'm learning, um, you know, like even with it taking Antoine almost 16 months to get to me, part of it is because I was holding him back because I knew once once he got in, okay, he ain't going to work. Right. You know, it was already he wasn't going nowhere. And he was just trying to say, I keep asking you, can I come see you? So finally, when I let you come see me, then he was like, I wish I could have stayed longer. But he had to go to work. Right. Um, because when we first hooked up, he wasn't working and I was in school. 
So our schedules were very flexible and it was nothing for him to come over at like nine o'clock in the morning and stay until four thirty, five o'clock. We just spend the whole day together. Right. And um I think he got a little spoiled. Of course he did. Um, and because I'm the type of female that I cater to my men anyway. He was rotten. He was so used to just coming over and doing whatever, you know, I'm here. It's, it's all about me. And for the most part it is, but some days I would give him a little fit. Mm-hmm. But I was, one thing that I was, you know, meditating on, I guess you could say, or ruminating would probably be the better word. You know how they describe, quote unquote, the pretty girls. Yeah. And they are sometimes synonymous with the mean girls. I had to think about that because this guy was like, well, that's you. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, what do you mean? He was like, that's why most of the guys didn't approach you because they didn't think they stood a chance. I said, you are kidding me, right? And he was like, no. And I said, oh. Because I never would consider myself to be like one of the mean girls or, you know, anything like that. But I ain't gonna lie. There were certain people I would not deal with. I do know that. Um, we all have standards. But I, I would never have put myself in the category of one of the pretty girls. Um, but yeah, one of the guys was like, yeah, because that's why nobody ever really actually came at you because they weren't stupid. I was like, oh, okay. You know, and it, I had to change the way, you know, my whole perspective because I was like, I never really put myself in that category, but they did. I just used to wonder why nobody came, you know, nobody approached me and said, you know, can I take you out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking, you know, well, what's wrong with me? No, they felt like I was going to turn them down. I was like, well, I didn't know that. You know, because I, I did my own thing anyway, so I wasn't paying that much attention. But yeah, I just, I thought about the thing and I said, well, wait a minute. You know, and I had to go back and, and look through a different lens and be like, okay, well, I can see how they would say that. Okay, I can see how they would say that. But that was not me. Right. Well, okay, let me let me rephrase that. Most of that was not me. Because <laughs> I did have standards. But I wasn't like blatantly obnoxious with it. I was just I ain't going to deal with you. Like, for instance, if you weren't a senior, I wasn't talking to you anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And nine times out of ten, most of the athletes were the ones that came at me. I didn't pick them. They picked me. (laughs) If I wasn't on a football team, I said, that's not true. I said, but those were the men that were in my face. I mean, what you want me to do? Because most of the football players, most of the basketball players, and a lot of the, the guys that were on the track team, those were the ones that were in my face. And then I had to remember, you know, those were the alpha males, and they were, you know, trying to prove they were the man. Right. And uh, Karen is an alpha female. She was doing her own thing. So, they, you know, they had to, to at least try to conquer me. But yeah, I had to think about that thing. And even my cousin, she used to say that all the time. And I didn't pay her any attention because I just felt like that was her insecurity speaking. Right. But, you know, I just I just thought that was interesting. And um, I don't know if you saw on my on my Facebook post, but I, I lost one of my front teeth. I mm-hmm. bit into something and it and it broke. Mm-hmm. And I told and I put on Facebook. I said it ain't gonna stop me from smiling. It's not gonna stop my flow. I'm gonna get it fixed when I can afford to get it fixed. But until then, that's it's the attitude not gonna you have to have. Yeah, huh? that's the attitude you have to have. Well, I had well, I had no choice. It's like either I'm gonna walk around keeping my mouth closed, which you know that is not me, <laughs> or you know I'm gonna smile regardless. And so when Tom finally got over here, he said, "Well, baby, what happened to you too?" I said, "It broke off." Somebody, did somebody hit you? I said, you know better than that. Because if somebody hit me, I would have been and told you. 
I said, but it doesn't stop my flow. He said, well, no, it didn't stop you. I said, it sure didn't. Did everything I wanted to do and some else. So what? <laughs> but yeah, he it, it was so funny. He was like, man, he said, I don't, I don't really show emotion and stuff, but I, I enjoyed myself. I said, I did too. You wanted to show I, some emotion. It was so good, huh? Huh? Emotions were starting to fly. Oh, yeah. That boy loves me. And if he thought, if he knew how I really felt, oh, he'd have been, he'd have been came and tried to, to scoop me up. But I don't tell him how I really feel because I don't know if I'm ready. Huh. Cool, G. I'm good enough. It was, look, I'm doing good. Let him come back in. <laughs> but yeah, he, um, yeah. Yeah. And um, I remember one, one person was saying, I'm going to tell you something. Because she was talking about my dog at the time before he died. She was like, two, th- two, two things that ain't going to change. Domino ain't going nowhere because he don't want nobody touching his owner. And Antoine ain't going nowhere. I said, shut up. But we started dealing with each other in 2000 and I want to say 12. We took a little break, but we're back. You have a big appetite, so the break wouldn't hurt you. Huh? You have a big appetite, so the break's not going to hurt you. Mm -mm. And see, my thing is, his mom and I were friends, but I can't see me being friends with you now because I'm sitting with your child. I just (laughs) can't. Because there's some things I wouldn't be able to talk to her about. So I just kind of, you know, she tried to to stir it up. But during the time that she tried to renew our friendship, he and I were going strong. And there was no way that I'm going to sit here and talk to you about your child. Right. So. But, um, and then, you know, she did some stuff that I didn't like. But I let her know. Like, if I'm your friend, you don't just stop talking to me. Because you're going through something and you don't tell me what's going on. So I don't know if I did something. She did that twice. I said she won't get a third time. I think, and my brother said this, and you tell me if you agree. My brother said that people feel like they can treat me the way they treat me because I'm quiet. I don't say everything that I think. And so they assume that my silence. Yeah. Mean it depends on the personality though. Some some people are just not gonna walk over you just because you're quiet or try you or try to push you past your your boundaries, you know, just because of that. Some people do. Some people are just that's where they are. They're gonna try you. If, even if they see that you are standing tough, they're gonna try to see if they can push back on the lines, you know? Yeah, and my whole thing with that is first of all. Nine from my ten. If I'm not saying anything, it's because I don't care. I mean, I just really don't care to expend that energy, or I wasn't paying attention. Because <laughs> sometimes I will tune people out. And so, like I told my brother, I said, I don't know. He said, but you don't say anything. I said, but what do you want me to say? If a person has made up their mind that they're going to do something. Why do I need to chime in? Because I can't tell them what to do. I can only tell them that I think that they might not need to do it, but I can't tell them what to do. And I don't try because I feel like this. If I don't want you telling me what to do, who am I to try to tell you what to do? There you go. But now, if I ask your opinion, that's different. But like I had to tell... Antoine, I said, baby, sometimes I just need to talk. I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to listen, okay? Okay. Okay. Because there were some things that I wasn't telling him that I was dealing with because I felt like I don't need to dump that on him because he can't fix it and then he's going to be frustrated because he can't make it right because he thinks he has to make everything right. And so I just wouldn't tell him. But he knew something was bugging me. He was like, well, what's going on? And I wouldn't tell him, well, I ain't asking no more. I don't ask you to <laughs> ain't gonna ask you no more. But I'm gonna think about it. But I'm not gonna ask you. And then he'll turn around and ask again. I ain't I ain't crazy. I know that trick too. But eventually I told him some of the stuff I was dealing with. And um 
he felt a little better because he was in the loop. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting here like, dude, leave me alone. But um, I just because I had to, I, I've been, you know, checking myself. I'm like, well, God, I don't really present myself like I'm a little doormat, but I'm not going to sit up here and go back and forth with somebody over something that I feel like is unimportant. And maybe that's what the problem is. Like I said, because like you say, I'm not giving them anything to go on. Their assumption is, oh, she good. No, she not good. She just watching to see how long you're going to do this and how far you think you're going to be able to go. Mm-hmm. And then when I, when I get really good and tired, I'm done and I walk away. And then they go, well, you, uh-uh, I don't have time. Cause I see where you were going with it. You know, I just don't, even with guys, it's like, they'll be talking and sometimes I listen and most times I don't. Like I told Tony, I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not looking at anybody, you know, like their perspective person in my life. Right. Cause I ain't got time for that. I'm not trying to get to know new people and all this crap. I said, right now I'm focusing on trying to get me together. And, um, he said, you ain't paying nobody no attention. I said, well, I'm talking to you. And he was like, oh, yeah. I said, uh-huh. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I wasn't taking a lot of mails, you know, for, because I don't want to hear that tired line about you think I'm beautiful, blah, blah, blah. You just want some booty. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Check you out. <laughs> you know, and, and you get tired of hearing the same old, like this one dude, he was bold enough. To come to me when I was at work and say, um, well, I'm married and I wear my, um, I wear my wedding ring proudly sometimes, 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 sometimes. Then he turned around and said, but can a brother get it? I was like, really? Wow. I said, you might want to go where you were going. Don't come back this way. <laughs> Because my thing is, what you must think I'm really stupid or I'm just dying for attention that you come at me and tell me boldly that you're married and then you're going to say, can a brother get a take? No. No. You don't even know me. I could be a whole lot of crazy. You don't know. Wow. Yeah. And then, like, this, this old man, Lance, for some reason, I got the whole wheelchair magnet going on. <laughs> the man, the man was in one of those motorized wheelchairs. He trying to get some too. He said, "This is how he came at me, right?" Mm, you look good. I said, "Thank you." You sure got a lot of tattoos? I said, "I do." You must have some money. I said, "Oh, I know tattoos ain't cheap. You must have some money." Well, so he can after your money. Wait, then he said, but you got some, you got some hips. I said, man, if you don't take your little old butt somewhere, you in a wheelchair, what am I going to do with you? What could I possibly do with you? Give him, you can give him a rolling lap lap dance. No, what he can do is take his old stuff on. He probably smelled like Bengay. I didn't even try it. I said, what did he, I mean, and the thing about it is, he didn't know how old I was. So he's assuming I'm in my 30s or 40s. You about 70 years old in a wheelchair. Can't get up. What could you possibly do for me? Can't get up and can't get up. I don't even look. I don't even want to know if he can get it up. But I said, and he wasn't, he's not the only one. And I'm like, what did these men think? You in a wheelchair. What you think? That's, that's like a car or something? Like you, you, you're doing something with your right. whole way? Oh my gosh. I was like, dude, I can't. So I had, um, I, I had tripped over the concrete at work and, um, I kind of fell forward and I told him, I said, and this is the day that I wore my short dress and I ain't trying to show all my goodies, right? And he talking about, mm, I said, besides, ain't nobody looking at me. He said, they looking, you just not paying any attention. I said, I said, no, I'm not paying any attention because I'm focused on doing what I got to do. He said, because I know that he said, some people want to see your goodies. I said, Antoine, you already know what my goodies look like. They're just a little bit smaller now. So 
I was um talking to this lady and she was asking me, she said, well, how long did it take you to lose, you know, the weight that you lost? I said, um, probably over a year, year and a half. Because I was a 28 pushing a 30. And I'm like a 14, 16, sliding down to a true 14. All the mercy. Huh? I said, hips for days. Well, I got hips. Yes, I do. And I love my thighs. I don't care nobody say. I, I told my mama. We were talking about that because when I went to go see my aunt when she was in the um, rest home, she said, mm, she thicker than you. And mama said, yeah. But see, my mother has always been skinny with a big old booty. Mm-hmm. But I'm shaped like my grandmother's. I have hips. I have breasts. You know, I got the full Monty going on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like, you know, but, you know, and, and my waist, it goes in a little bit. It don't go in as much as I want it to, but it's going in. <laughs> but um, I was like, I'm I'm happy with my thickness. I ain't got no problem with it. And my mama was like, and I ain't got no problem with my thing. I said, I know. I said, but some people had issues. Like when, when she would tell my other aunt, you show sure is getting big. My aunt would take it personally and be all upset. I'm like, but that's her. She's going to say that. But um, it's just, I'm about the size I was when I was in high school. It's just proportioned just a little bit differently. More womanly. Well, I got a best friend right here in the front that I'm trying to get rid of. <laughs> you know? Like me and the little dude, he said he trying to, because he looks like, he literally looks like a human Buddha, because his belly is that big. He said, I'm trying to get rid of my closest friend. I said, who is your closest friend? He said, my belly. I said, you stupid. But um, I'm I'm trying to bring her on down, because I mean, I always had like a little small belly, but not this size. So it's going down. And I realized most men, like, okay, so she got a little belly, but she got this. I'm like, you know what? Y'all are funny. Because they say we as women, we worry about stuff that y'all don't even think about. Mm. And I, I said, I disagree. Like one girl was saying, um, the dudes don't worry about lotion. I said, yes, they do. I said, because if you offer him or some ashy behind, he going to take it, but he going to talk about it. Right. She, she said, you think so? I said, I know so, because men talk. Yes, they do. <laughs> and they can care what you do with somebody else. Like, I am extremely feminine, and I understand, and I realize that, and it's not going to change. I love to put the lotion on. I love to put the perfume on. I like my nails done. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just feminine like that. And he made a, a big deal out of that when we first got together. Really? God, you're soft. Oh, you smell so good. And I'm sitting there like, wait, what do you, wait, wait, what do you used to, sweetheart? And you know, I would, I would put on the little matching, you know, bra and panty set or whatever. He didn't care about that. Take it off. But he cared about my toes being done, my fingers being done, um, me, you know, my skin being smooth, and me smelling like something. I mean, you know, that just drove him crazy. And then one time I had on like a turquoise um, brown panty set and I had on turquoise nail polish and he was like, oh my gosh, you got everything matched. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, he likes stuff like that. But it's like, I'm learning. Men aren't used to women that, that are like that anymore. And so when they run into a woman who is extremely feminine, they just, it just drives them bananas. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but wait, what are you used to? And most women, they haven't been taught how to take care of themselves as far as, you know, keeping that feminine side. It doesn't matter what you do, but keep yourself, you know, keep your skin hydrated so it's nice and soft. Keep keep your hair looking like something. Make sure you smell. You got some kind of scent. It doesn't have to be strong, but make sure you smell good. And um, I'm just, you know. Some some women just don't. I mean, they're not thinking like that. Yeah, some women that won't wash for a week too. You need to hook up homeboy with them. 
<laughs> I mean, I, 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 this is what blew my mind. Because I'm thinking we're in the 20th century, now the 21st. Um, my girl, the, the one that I used to hang with, she was a wash-up woman. And I said, baby, what you doing? She said, taking a wash-up. I said, why don't you get your butt in the shower? Mm-hmm. But that's what she was taught. And I realized, even though we're in the 21st century, ignorance is still prevalent. It's just not as obvious because there are things that people do there are things that people do that blows my mind like you're in a house with a bathroom that has a full shower bathtub why are you taking a wash up I know it's crazy it's a mentality and, but then my thing is if you're a big girl People already assume that big girls think. <laughs> no, no, that's not true. No, they do, honestly. And then I heard this one guy say, you big, but I don't never smell you. I said, excuse me, what are you trying to say? He said, because he didn't know how to say it. But basically what he was saying was most of the big girls that he has encountered have had a little odor. I said, no, we don't do that. I said, we don't do that at all. I said, how do I look offer myself up to somebody? And I know I'm smelling like smelling like. No, we don't do that. You got to get all those nooks and crannies and crevices. Yeah, you. we don't do that. And he, you know, and we sat down and we talked about it. And I said, because this is how I was brought up. I can't speak for anyone else. And this fool to me, well, they needed your mama because, uh, I said, stop it. I said, people are where they are. And if they choose, they have to choose to come up. They've got to want to come up. I mean, even with the sore on on my behind, I mean, I still made sure, you know, I was clean and everything. I just had to be mindful of getting anything inside it until it closed up. But no, we ain't going to do that. Mm -mm, We can't do that. But I just, like you say, Lance, we have standards. But we also have to have standards for ourselves. Right about that. And see, a lot of people don't. They act and like I they do, but they don't. Huh? They, they act like they do, but they don't. But they don't. Because when you really, they say you don't know anybody until you live with them. When I live with that fool, I said, Ew. And so, I'll never forget. I went to his when he moved into his little house or whatever. I went over there right before I stopped talking to him, and he had to go to work. Now, when he was living with me, our gas got turned off because I didn't know he was holding money in his pocket because I didn't have any. So they turned the gas off. So he made this big to do when we got put out and we went to the hotel mm-hmm. that um. She know I don't like no cold showers. I don't take no cold showers. Blah, 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 blah. Well, he took a shower that day. He was in there taking a hot shower. And I went to go get some ice. Right. When I, when I came back, that's when he had gone through my iPad and my uh, and my phone. And at that point, I didn't care because it's like, you want to know so bad? Here you go. But um, he made all this fuss about he ain't like cold water. He need his gas on. When I get to his house, their gas is not on. See? <laughs> I said, but you, but you made all that noise about not wanting to take a cold shower, blah, 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 right? Dude, I kid you not. He was getting ready to go to work. He went in the bathroom and he used the bathroom. He came out of the bathroom, opened up a brand new pair of underwear and put them on. And I said, oh, Because I'm thinking to myself, you did not take a shower. I know. That's nasty. And then he put his clothes on <laughs> and got ready to go to work. And I was like, just take me home. Please. Just. And I took a, I took an extra long shower because I was like, mm, just thinking about that. But um, I was like, okay. Did you shower more? 
Yes, because it was like, ew. And so, um, yeah. After that, I was like, I ain't going back over there. Ever again. And then that on that particular day, um, that night that I went over there, his uncle was there. So he leaves me with his uncle because he goes to go pick up my friend. Right. And the uncle was trying to holler. Oh, no. I said, dude. I said, you know, he would break your neck. <laughs> and so I told him when he came back, I said, you know, he was making little, you know, comments. Or he said, and that's my uncle. He said, and the sad thing is, when he had nowhere to stay, he stayed with me. I helped him out. He said, this is how he going to repay me. I said, I'm just letting you know because I don't want you to hear about it later. And he swear up and down. I tried to talk to him because I don't want that old man. Right. And so the uncle was sitting in the front room with my friend. And I guess the uncle thought he was going to get him some or whatever. <laughs> he tried her and, too? Yeah, he tried her. And so she was like, I don't even know you. I just need you to take me home. And so he got, she said he kept asking her, what did I see in him? And why was I with him? And stuff like that. And she was like, why are you worried about them? And um, she said, he talking about, he asked her to give him, give him a blood job. Oh, no. And she said, wait, I don't wait, he, wait, she, he, yeah. he just met her. Uh huh. And just out, out, out. Uh huh. And speechless. see, so he that makes killed. damn no. But that makes me wonder what did he say to you to make you feel comfortable enough to ask her for that? You know, how did he present her? And so I said, well, she said she told him, um, I'm not fooling with you. I ain't got nothing to say to you or something like that. And she told him that she wasn't interested. Right. Right. And so, <laughs> this is crazy. So then she said when he, when she told him she wasn't interested, then he wanted to know about me and him. I said, huh? She said, yeah. He kept asking me, what in the world do you see in him, and why are you dealing with him? I said, okay. And um, so we called us. You know, he called himself trying to impress me with his. I don't know. I miss you, sex or whatever. But I wasn't impressed. And so, while we were back there doing that, his uncle was talking mad junk about him to her. Oh. And she, you know, she told him what he said. And so, he walked in on the tail end of the conversation. Of and so, when he when he came back, and he said, be quiet. And we were listening. The uncle was going in. You hear me? He ain't this. He ain't that. I don't know what she's seeing him. I don't know why she's dealing with him. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, because he wanted a blowjob. Actually, the uncle wanted to have sex with me. Wow. And he didn't. And I was not even entertaining that. And so then he goes at her and he tries to get her to give him a blowjob. Then he says, well, we can just go. We just go ahead and have sex. I got a comment right here. Oh. She said, just because that's what they're doing. That's not what we're doing. And so <laughs> I was like, well, baby, I didn't know. I wouldn't have subjected you to that. I didn't know because I didn't know the uncle either. Well, he's an old, older guy. Yeah, he was like, let me see. Clee was in his 40s. I think the uncle had to be close to 60. Damn. Yeah, close to 60. And I ain't mad at you because you're close to 60. I'm mad at you because you trifling enough to, first of all, admit that you got a woman at home. And then you're trying to get someone to sneak to. No, no, we don't, we don't do that. So, yeah, it, it was it was an adventure dealing with him. But I get over there and you tell me you made all this fuss about not having gas and not having hot water. And then I tell him, I said, cook me some eggs. And he says, oh, the gas ain't on. I can't cook nothing. I got to cook it on the grill. I said, do what? So everything they ate, they cooked it on the grill. You know, I went home and got me something. <laughs> the everyday yeah. cookout. Yeah, and I, I went home and got me something to eat because I was like, we're not doing this. But 
lot of marriages. That taught me so much about me. And it helped me to understand why I have standards because I will never go down that low again. Um, How can you go? Man. But I, but, and like I said, you know, I have to be honest, I was at a low point. But when I'm at a low point, that is not the time to enter into anybody's relationship because mm-hmm. I don't have time to check you out like I ought to. 